This is probably going to be one of the most passionate videos I've done in a while. And the reason for this is because of Green Bull. If you haven't read One Piece chapter 1054, go ahead and read it. If you are anime only, spoiler warning, of course, I'm not going to spoil a lot of what's going on. I'm just going to talk about what Green Bull said in particular and relate it to one real world events, um, what we go through in our real lives and also the foundation of One Piece. And I think what is the core um, problem with the world that we have in One Piece that I think Luffy and the Straw Hats will solve or the One Piece will have something to do with. And let's harp on to what Green Bull said in particular. Green Bull's ideology is that Wano which is not under the jurisdiction of the world government, which all of us should know, has no rights. They have no human rights. That's what the Viz says. You can look at the other translations as well, but the premise of it is because you are not affiliated with the world government, you are beneath us. You are, I can kill as many people as I need to, to fulfill my objective because I don't have to follow the rules of the world government. The world government rules all. Discrimination breeds solace. Hierarchy breeds peace. That whole ideology is the foundation of the system of racism, the foundation of institutional racism, the foundation of discrimination, of prejudice, of nationalism, to a certain degree. I don't want to get too political because I'm not going to pretend I'm someone who understands, you know, political jargon to the certain degree. But from what we've seen in our history of our world, from human nature in general, this ideology has stood the test of time no matter what people think and that's very very important this is what i want you guys to understand what green bull uttered here in the latest chapter of one piece i think is arguably the most important ideology that oda has put in his story that the world government has used to rule over the entire world and it shapes the one piece world that we see today and it's also the antithesis of how luffy and the pirates and gold roger live their lives so there's two crazy contrasting ideals of discrimination versus freedom of choice and this is where i really love the 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 fiber of one piece the story that oda is telling where a lot of people you know you focus on the literary uh, elements and you focus on certain narratives and you certain on specific narratives within the story and wano and the people of wano and the suffering and things of that nature but for me what really pulls me in is these serious real world issues one i'll be honest because i am an african-american i am an african i am a minority and for those who are minorities we understand discrimination at a very personal level which is why the the story of Fishman really resonates with me. The story of Fish, uh, Fisher Tiger. The reason I can sympathize with characters like Arlong, the reason I can sympathize with characters like Jimbe is because of that fact. Now, Green Bull in particular is awesome because I despise what he said. When I read that, I was upset. Now, we can, I, you know, you know my personality. I like to meme around. You know, we called him, you know, Green Bigot or Coon Bull or, you know, um, Racist Justice is his ideology. And that's true. All of that is true. I wouldn't be surprised if Green Bull saw Fishman and be like, oh, look at this nasty little creature. Like, we don't like you. You know, things like that. But then again, he may not. He, there's still room for Green Bull's character. There could be a good side to him. But that ideology alone disqualifies anything for me. You know, that is Rob Lucci rhetoric that we don't enjoy. So from a standpoint of morality, I don't like Green Bull. From a standpoint of an antagonist, I'm very intrigued by him. As an antagonist, I think he'd be an excellent antagonist because as someone mentioned in um, my comment section when I made a tweet about Green Bull, that a lot of the admirals have kind of been on the fence. They kind of just do their job for the most part. Kizaro's a little lazy. In his, in his justice, like, I'm just going to do what I need to do and get it done as quickly as I can so I can go back to vibing. And Aokiji, you know, Aokiji has a scope where he can see both sides of things, but he understands what side he's on, so he t he follows orders as well. Akainu is very blind in his justice. It's just straightforward, absolute, this is what it is. If you don't agree with it, you're done. And that's it. And that's probably why Green Bull aligns with Akainu more. Because Green Bull is like, yo, Akainu gets the stuff done. He gets it. He understands. This is justice. We're doing it. It is what it is. The scary thing about that is the people that enforce the rhetoric, the people that enforce the ideology. Because if there's one thing that we know about society, if there's one thing that we know about human race, it's whoever's in power at the time will dictate the flow of society, will dictate the flow of 
how humans perceive life and how they should go about life. And this is a very deep conversation, guys. This is not some run-of-the-mill philosophical debate. No, this is things that I've observed by paying attention to how we behave as human beings. We are naturally inclined to categorize ourselves. That's how humans process things. We put things in categories, which is why discrimination is a tool that humanity has used in so many different facets. People will point to religion, and they'll point to the Crusades, or they'll point to you know the Renaissance, and they point to the intellectualism that we are now in now, where you know intellectualism is the um, depiction of someone's status, you know. Or when it comes to back in the day, it was about your power, where you know were you strong enough? Like it, when you when you when you um, look at the Spartan Empire, for example, right? So the warrior class is the ruling class, and then there's you know the, in Athens where the intellectuals and the scholars are the ruling class, and then there's the renaissance where the philosophers are really not the ruling class but they're the ones who are guiding society in the right direction and then today i think it's more about you know social justice i feel like social justice is now where we're going in our in as a society where this is how we're going to live our lives it's you know it's inclusion progression all these other things like that you know one thing that we learn is with human nature we have no choice but to discriminate we discriminate no matter what we do, no matter how hard we try. Someone has to be bad. Somebody has to be good. Somebody has to be rich. Somebody has to be poor. I'm not saying that it needs to be that way because we obviously believe in things like egalitarian. Um, I'm not going to say that word, but you know what I mean? Egalitarianism and, and utopia. That's the ideal. That's what we want. We want everyone to be equal. We want everyone to share all these resources, right? And then if you notice the way our countries have been, there's always a separation. So let's take this back to One Piece because I, I got too deep into the real world examples but look at the celestial dragons look at emu right look at how people are celebrating sabo as a result and again spoilers for anime that are here look at how people are lauding sabo for killing the nefertari and the reason they're excited about killing cobra nefertari even though sabo may have not done it is because he is a he is a representative of the 12 of uh, the 20 founders of the world the people who are considered celestial dragons, the people that are considered gods. If you are able to kill someone like that, it goes against the status quo. It's good against evil, poor against rich, privileged against unprivileged. So Sabo is the unprivileged that killed the privileged and is a representative of the unprivileged. And the entire world has been under the cloud of the celestial dragons for such a long time that it's no wonder that all of a sudden now Sabo is the flame emperor, this, this, this kindred spirit that speaks for the unprivileged. And then you look at Green Bull, who's the opposite side of the coin, where he's like, yo, hierarchy is what breeds peace. Somebody needs to rule over those beneath them in order to maintain order. And I understand that, which is, again, why anarchy is a concept that not a lot of us enjoy and i feel like luffy in a sense represents anarchy in a way where luffy is like hey man this isn't right i'm gonna destroy it and move on and that's what happens now fortunately for us there's good you know monarchs in place to actually clean up the mess that luffy actually does while destroying the status quo but the main point of this video and the main point of me going on this soliloquy and talking about the world that we're living in is because Oda is doing such a brilliant job and allowing us to relate to what we deal with today which is why I love the Fishman Island so much Fishman Island arc so much is because it's people see Fishman you saw how Stelly you saw how certain people looked at King Neptune looked at Fishman and thought oh my god I heard stories that if I touch him I'll turn into a Fishman or or they eat people and all this other stuff and, and just think about it as a minority think about your you know you're a young brown black boy and you're walking you're walking on the sidewalk and someone looks at you or you're walking behind someone they look back at you and they get scared and they start clutching their purse and they cross the street you know based on just a fear like sure they don't know you they've never met you before but that's just fear they don't know better they don't know because but all they've seen is a depiction of oh my god you know i've seen a depiction of um african americans always up to unruly things and you know he's got a beard and maybe his pants are a little too low you know you see instances of of you know unarmed killings right for, uh, by police officers and i'm not going to get into that as well but i'm giving you guys an example of what fear breeds and what fear does and this is what this is where it all comes from it comes from messages like green bull messages where whoever dictates who to who to <laughs> who to discriminate against whoever dictates that dictates what is right 
and what is wrong in the world. And as long as they have the power and the backing to enforce it, it'll eventually spread like a cancer to the point where the minority is identified based on what those in power have told the majority to be. So right now in the One Piece world, we live in a world where we believe the celestial dragons are gods. Therefore, that rhetoric has spread across the One Piece world to the point where people are scared to touch the celestial dragons because they've preached that message. The Navy, the, the Marines, who are the actual power of the world government, obviously the world government FCB Zero and all of that, they enforce that ideology. And as a result, everyone comes in line because one, they are scared to go against that power. Therefore, they adopt it. They teach their kids about it. All of a sudden, it becomes normal to them to the point where they're not even worried about fear of backlash because they're so comfortable in their safety that as long as I follow this ideology, I'm safe, my family's safe, I can live my life, I teach it to my kids. Kids don't even understand where it originated from. So to them, that's what life is. And it passes down into generation to generation until it's an embedded doctrine. And that's where we're at now. And what's going on here is that there is a peace that has been established based on ignorance based on a philosophy that's been taught year after year after year after year, which is why now it's, this, this doctrine has been embedded in this country for 800 years, which is why the void century is so important because that indoctrination was created during the void century. Whatever happened in the void century is so important to the indoctrination of 800 years that have been done by the 20 founders and the celestial dragons and Emu ultimately. That once we figure out what happened in the void century, it's gonna blow everything up. That's why the world government doesn't want Robin to figure out what happened. That's why O'Hara was destroyed. That's why Luffy and Roger are such a threat because whatever the one piece is, whatever that thing is, goes against the status quo. It's dangerous, the one piece is dangerous. Whatever it is, it will go against the status quo. Whether it's a story, whether it's an item, whether it's something that Maybe it's something minute, but that minute detail represents everything that goes against the world that has been established today. That, I think, is what the One Piece is in itself and the idea of the One Piece. So Green Bull, and, and I know it's just it's so funny that just one or two lines from an admiral can make you think this deeply about the story, can make you think so much to the point where it personally resonates with you. And I think with Green Bull, we have a character now that we can latch onto and an antagonist we can latch onto within the Marines where he's going to firmly be on the side of the Celestial Dragons and Akainu. I don't think there's any way he gets redeemed and I personally don't want him to be redeemed because I want to see either Luffy or Sabo or somebody go against that status quo and destroy it like he did with Luchi. Luchi has to come back into the picture with this rhetoric. We're going to clash with the world government now. It's time to engage the world government. It's time to engage this indoctrination and destroy it and break it. And in order to destroy an indoctrination, revolution has to happen. That's, that's what we've seen everywhere. We've seen that everywhere. So now the Revolutionary Army, it's no, it's no surprise that Oda is now focusing on the revolutionaries and the world government because now it's time to tackle the, indoctr the indoctrination. Wano itself was built on an indoctrination that Orochi put in place. Changed the history, changed everything. So Wano was the teaser. Wano was the teaser for the indoctrination. Wano is the teaser. Wano is the important piece of history that holds all the cards of the beginning of the indoctrination of the world government. Pluton's there, there's a road poneglyph there, Kaido was there. The people that hold this, the people that have written down the secrets of the world, making the poneglyphs, the ancient language, that all begins in Wano. Wano's the starting point of this world government revolutionary 800 years of indoctrination arc that we're ready to get into. And Oda just mentioned in one of his interviews that we're getting into the voice century now. It's no surprise. It's no surprise. And Green Bull's statement kicked all of that off. One Piece is about to get very interesting. If it really delves into these topics finally as deeply as they did in Fishman Island, oh boy, we're in for a trip. We're for a trip and we're in for a lot of personal adventures. I'm so excited. This, I love talking about this part of One Piece. This part of One Piece is what I love more than anything else. And I plan on talking deeply about Fishman Island and really talking about how it personally affects 
me, minorities, peoples of color, and how we shouldn't underestimate these messages. And we need to face these messages head on because that's what's important about this story. It's not just about, you know, pirates running around and having a goofy adventure. Sure, that's part of it. Sure, that's part of the fabric of it, but that's not all it is. That's the mean part. That's the non-serious part. One Piece has very serious issues that we need to accept are there and not to dismiss them. Not to get upset at people who like to focus on them because I'm sorry, but I like real world examples. I like real world issues being tackled in a medium that I love. Bless you, Order, for this. I'll catch you guys later. Take care. Yo, everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe here to get the latest from the channel. Also, check out some other videos that might suit your specific tastes.